only makes you try to sound it. Oh. Somebody, thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, his daddy, James. Yeah. 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 Well, good evening. How's everybody now? I'm not Ron. I don't look like Ron, do baby. <laughs> Ron's working tonight, so devotion fell on me tonight. But it's good to see everybody tonight. Good to be here. I'm Terry Greer, I'm the pastor. And uh, we're glad to have the hearts with us, Delbert and uh, Rochelle. Is that right? Yes, sir. All righty. Glad to have you all tonight. And glad to see everybody come out tonight. And uh, I want to give you a little schedule. We were able to kind of get through the virus. God's blessed us so much. And... Uh, we started back our singing this last Saturday with Keith Plot, and this starts up our Wednesday nights again, 7 o'clock each Wednesday. Uh, next Wednesday, we'll have Debbie Williams. The next Wednesday, April 7th, we'll have Singing for Him. Uh, Wednesday, April 14th, we'll have Lawrence Ashley Family. Uh, Wednesday, April 21st, All for Him. All for Him, that's my saluta. They did our... Uh, Christmas program for us this past year. And then, uh, let's see, next Wednesday, April 28th, Wayne, help me out on this one. William Herring. William Herring, Herring. I didn't, uh, couldn't remember. He was, he was here for a singing Saturday. William's been here before. We'll, we'll be glad to have him back. And then on Saturday, that's on Wednesday, April 28th, and then we'll skip, uh, skip the next Wednesday, and then Saturday, May the 8th, we're going to have the Centurions from Greenwood. That's on a Saturday, and uh, that'll be uh, 7 o'clock on Wednesdays. Usually, that'll probably be 6 o'clock on Saturday, I guess. We have to set the time for that. But hopefully, uh, y'all come back and tell everybody about our singings, and we're welcome everybody. Don't want to take anybody away from their church on Wednesday. Pastor but Centurion's uh, is at 6 o'clock. Centurion's 6 o'clock, okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Good, all right. All right, I'll go ahead and have a little devotion for us tonight. And then we'll turn it over to the hearts and let them come. And we're looking forward to hearing them sing tonight. Uh, let me get my specs on here. <clears throat> we're going to read uh, 2 Kings chapter 6. You know, we're getting close to Easter, right? Mm -hmm. Not this Sunday, but Sunday week is Easter. So uh, my favorite book in the New Testament, of course, is the Gospel of Mark. But my favorite uh, books <clears throat> are the Old Testament, 1st and 2nd Kings. So for my, our Bible study tonight, our devotion, 2 Kings chapter 6. Uh, 1 through 6. I'm going to read that for us. 2 Kings 6, 1 through 6. And the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee into Jordan, take thee into every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with our servants. And Elisha answered and said, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand, and he took it. In his turning point uh, daily devotional, David Jeremiah writes, We know the bus we need to catch. It's going to be on time. A friend who has promised to help us on Saturday, we know he's going to keep his word. That pension check that we need by the end of the month, it's, it's not going to be late. Well, certainly, or as close as we can get to it, in human terms, I guess, you know, all those things bring peace of mind, doesn't it? The truth is, though, I think we'll all agree tonight, nothing is absolutely certain in this life. Things happen that never happened before. So you know what? If we achieve a degree of peace by trusting in things that are less than certain, how much more peace can we enjoy by trusting in someone who can never fail? Psalms 119, 138 says, Your testimonies which you have commanded are righteous and very faithful. The Apostle Paul said, when we commit our uncertainty to God in prayer, the peace of God which surpasses all understandings will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 7. <clears throat> you know, when we put our absolute
absolute trustworthiness in Jesus Christ, we're going to have peace. Amen. Now, if we read the text tonight, the prophet Elisha, he's teaching at a certain location where students are attending. I, I guess as I read this and studied this, it's sort of like a seminary that I went to. You know, you got students, they're there, you got a teacher, he's teaching them, he's uh, preaching to them. And it seems that things are going very well. Students are increasing, and they uh, are listening to Elisha, giving them guidance in their own ministries, and things are going good, things are growing. And it seems that because of the growth, it's suggested to Elisha that they maybe probably build an addition onto the location to where they're at uh, because of this attendance. So Elisha and the students head down to the banks of Jordan to Gilgal, that's where their school is located. And they go down to cut some wood for the proposed addition. Well, while the men were working, an accident occurs in which the axe head comes loose from the handle. Now, some of you, maybe that's happened to you. I don't know. But see, the axe head comes off the handle from one of the students as he's cutting wood. And the axe head goes into the Jordan River. Now, when I say accident, we know what accident is, don't we? Okay? Well, let's split this up a little bit. From the divine side of things, there is no accident. Because nothing in the whole world, nothing in this universe, nothing happens unless God's ordained it. Amen. Okay? Now, but from the human side, you know that many things result from our actions, which we didn't intend it for, you know, we didn't intend that to happen. I mean, it was no design of this man that he should lose the head of the axe. That he did, it was an accident, okay? And he's very distraught, not because necessarily he lost the axe head. The reason he is so distraught is because the axe was borrowed. And he probably going to have to pay that thing back. He probably ain't got no money. So it was borrowed. And so because he was so distraught, he goes to his master... And he cries out, Alas, Master, for it's borrowed. Now, we know it was an accident, right? Mm -hmm. But now we know sometimes accidents occur because of our carelessness, don't they? Amen. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you oh, climb yeah. up a ladder like Wayne did here one day. <laughs> he, no, he wasn't careless. No, he just missed a step, that's all. But, you know, <laughs> that happens. You know, that happens to us. I mean, if I'm cutting wood with a chainsaw... If I'm careless and I'm cutting the beam on the ground, if I'm not careful, uh, while I'm cutting, the, the, I'll, I'll let the chainsaw get stuck. You know, it can break the chain, knock the chain off, or maybe bend the arm that holds the chain. But now, the main point I'm trying to get to tonight of our lesson and our devotion is that he lost the axe head. He knew it was barred. And when he comes to Elisha to inform him of the situation, he cries out to the master, alas. Now, alas means he believed the action was fatal. In other words, he believed there's no way, absolutely, positively, 110%, he's not getting that axe head back. It's going to fall in the Jordan River. Gone forever. A lost cause. And so he presents this lost cause to his master. Now, let me ask you a question. Now, how many times as Christians, how many times have you gone to the Lord in prayer, the one who is able to do all things, and you pray a prayer for God's help, but you know all along, you believe all along in your heart and mind that you don't believe God's able to really do what he wants to do, what you want him to do. Don't look at the cross at it because you've all done that. Mm -hmm. Why did he go to Elisha in the first place? Why did he go to Elisha with the problem? Well, that's his master. Well, you see, he didn't regard Elisha as being too great a man maybe to be troubled on such a trivial matter like losing an axe head. He knew that Elisha was someone who would honestly, basically, be concerned about his loss. In fact, the great John Newton once said, Not one concern of ours is small 
if we believe to him to teach us this, the Lord of all once made the iron to swim. You see, beloved, Elisha takes a little small tree, he cuts down a little small tree, maybe a sapling. Elisha cuts it down and throws it in the water. You know why the iron came back up? Because he threw in that piece of wood. Let that lost item rise again. Maybe you're thinking like me now, once lost but now saved. <laughs> once lost but now found. Yeah, I'm like you. I do see a picture here. I, see what the, I, I do see the typology here. I do see the, the picture here of a cross. But I think we're all Christians here tonight. Hopefully we are. There's something more that I see here that we as Christians need to consider tonight. Is there anyone here tonight, or do you know any believer, who no longer enjoys the liberty they once had in prayer, the once liberty they used to have in studying the Bible, the once enjoyment they had in the Christian life? I want to ask you tonight, have any of you lost your joy? You know a Christian tonight, do you know any believer tonight who's lost your joy? Now, not your salvation. You know, if you're truly a Christian tonight, you're not going to lose your salvation because you've been sealed. You've been sealed by the resurrection. You've been baptized. You're old. You've been gone and you rose up to walk in the newness of life of Christ Jesus. You're, you're saved. You're, you're there. But for some reason, maybe maybe because of an accident, maybe something going on in your life tonight, maybe there's a disappointment, maybe there's a discouragement, maybe there is a stress or trial or tragedy that's going on in your life and you, you had absolutely nothing to do with it. Why have you lost your joy tonight? Well, if you're here tonight or if you know a Christian who's lost their joy, I'm going to tell you how to get it back. First thing each one of us has to do is go to our master. You see, that's the first thing. You got, you got to go to the master, first of all. And when you go to the master, the first thing the master is going to ask you where it fell. You see, beloved, no matter where you lost your joy, no matter how hopeless the devil has made you think that you can't retrieve it, if you go to the master, first of all, I guarantee you, he's going to help you. Amen. The Lord's willing, the Lord's able to help you, but you've got to acquaint your Lord with your grief. Now, he already knows everything about you. He already knows where you lost your joy. He already knows how you lost your joy. He already knows why you lost your joy. But he wants you to come to him. Amen. Uh -huh. That's right. And he wants you to freely spread out your need before him. And like Elisha, even though he knows, he's going to ask you where it fell. Where did you lose your joy, Terry? Where did you lose it? When did you lose it? How did you lose it? See, the Lord's going to search your heart. He's going to have you to examine yourself, to review your past, and to remember the place, that point in your life where your blessings ceased and where you lost your joy. He wants you to discover the personal cause of your spiritual loss. Maybe he wants you to judge yourself because of your failure and maybe confess it, acknowledging the blame to be entirely yours. Now you say, wait a minute. <laughs> Tragedies, accidents, problems come my way. Listen, I didn't cause it. And you want me to be entirely to blame for it? You bet so. You know why you're to blame tonight? Because if you're a Christian, no matter what happens to you, I don't care what happens to you, if you're a true Christian of God tonight and you lose your joy of your salvation, you're to blame, not God. Amen. You're to blame entirely. Amen. Amen. Entirely to blame. Exactly. Don't look at me like I don't know what I'm talking about tonight. Because my daughter died of cancer at 27 years old. And I'm going to tell you something. It took me a long time to learn that truth. Yeah. It took me a while to learn it. But I learned it. Mm -hmm. When you learn it, you begin to realize that God loves you. God cares for you. God will help you to avail yourself and make you Understand the means of recovery Amen. to replace the joy. And the means of recovery is for the stick to be cast in. You've got to fall at the foot of the tree. You've got to fall at Jesus' feet. you 
got to fall at the foot of Mount Calvary. And you got to plead God's grace that won the victory at the cross and sealed your joy at the resurrection. I know as good as anybody that our Christian road is not easy. <laughs> our Christian road is very hard. Mm -hmm. And the devil's got many, many ways to get us to stop moving forward as a Christian and thus to lose our blessings and to lose our joy. So, beloved, if you're here tonight, for whatever reason, you've lost your joy, then all you got to do is what verse 7 says in our text. All you got to do is stretch forth your hand of faith and God will provide for you. <coughs> God will care for you. God will love you. Amen. God will restore what you lost. Amen. God will restore your joy. Amen. So, beloved, tonight, if peace seems elusive tonight in your life, then commit yourself afresh and anew. Commit your concerns to Him in prayer. And then, beloved, rest peacefully in the joy and delight that Amen. He will give to you. Amen. God bless you tonight. Amen. I hope you're all here tonight. I hope you're filled with joy. But maybe you know a Christian tonight. Maybe someone in your family, someone has lost their joy. You tell them about Elisha. You tell them that their joy can rise up again. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this night. Thank you, dear God, for all your many wonderful blessings. Thank you, God, for your love, your concern, and your care for us. Lord, we're just full of joy tonight because of the Holy Spirit. The Lord, let the Holy Spirit move tonight. Bless the hearts as they come and sing. We're looking forward, Lord, to being blessed tonight. So, Lord, fill us place with your spirit, your love, and your care. And, Lord, may we have wonderful joy tonight as we praise your holy name in song. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.